please rise for the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor of Perth, Mr Basil Zemplis. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the City of Perth August 2023 Ordinary Council meeting. I'll declare the meeting officially open at one minute after 5 p.m. I respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet, the Wajak Noongar people of Western Australia, and pay my respects to Elders past and present. It is a privilege to be standing on Wajak Noongar land. CEO, uh, now that everybody's up, can I ask you please to recite the prayer? Almighty God, under whose providence we hold responsibility for this city, grant us wisdom to understand its present needs, foresight to anticipate its future growth, and grave grace to serve our fellow citizens with integrity and selfless devotion. And to thee be all blessing and glory forever. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Please be seated. Nice to see so many people in the chamber tonight. That's always encouraging, and thank you for being here. Um, I will take this opportunity to remind everybody that in accordance with Council Policy 1.4, the meeting is being live streamed this evening and the recording will be made available on the city's website following the meeting. Now, let's go through our attendance, shall we? In attendance tonight, we have the Deputy Lord Mayor, Liam Govett. Hello, Councillor. Councillor Sandy Angie, good evening to you. Councillor Clyde Bevan, hello. Councillor Rebecca Gordon, good evening. Councillor Victor Coe, lovely to have you with us, and Councillor Catherine Lisa, hello. In addition, I welcome officers, members of the public, and any media in attendance or watching the live stream. Item 3.1 tonight is apologies, and 3.2 is leave of absence. Now, there are no apologies this evening, and Councillor Brent Fleeton is currently on an approved leave of absence. Item 3.3 is applications for leave of absence. Do any other elected members have an application for leave of absence? Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. From the 13th of September until the 18th of September. Mm -hmm. Inclusive, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Deputy Lord Mayor. We're going to move to announcements by the Lord Mayor. And so it is, uh, yes, yes, well, I did sort of just ask that. Um, uh, so we need to move a motion to approve the leave of absence application. Is that what you're saying, Deputy Lord Mayor? She's good that you're here. Um, moved by Councillor Victor Coe, seconded by Councillor Leeser. Uh, are there any objections? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, so item four announcements, as I said, and it is a incumbent upon me to inform everybody as I take this opportunity to remind you that this is the last meeting of this council prior to the upcoming election before the council's caretaker period begins on Thursday the 31st of August 2023. So that's this Thursday. Now for those of you who are not familiar with the term, a caretaker period is a time frame leading up to an election where an incumbent council assumes a caretaker role and avoids taking actions or making decisions that may bind an incoming council while electors are deciding who the new council should be. I think that's reasonably self-explanatory, but important that it is noted. So in essence, caretaker period begins this Thursday, Thursday, 31 August. I mentioned Councillor Fleeton's absence, and you'll notice another empty chair. Important that I say that former Councillor Di Bain resigned her position with the City of Perth Council on the 17th of August 2023, effective immediately, in accordance with Section 4.17 of the Local Government Act 1995. This vacancy on council will remain unfilled until the next ordinary election in October. And I take this opportunity to thank former Councillor Bain for her contribution and wish her all the best. So we move to item five, and that is disclosures of interest. And CEO, I'm going to ask you to take the floor here, please. Thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll begin with a disclosure of interest for Councillor Gordon under 12.3 Major Events and Festival Sponsorship Perth Festival. 
It's in relation to an indirect financial interest. I have accepted tickets to Perth Festival events in excess of the gift threshold. Also for Councillor Gordon, under 11.3, introduction of additional use health care to 99 Lot 10 Adelaide Terrace. It's an indirect financial interest. I am an officer of the Fortescue subsidiaries domiciled at 87 Adelaide Terrace, which is co-located with the subject site. Also, we have the following interest. Councillor Catherine Leeser has disclosed an a proximity interest in item 11.2 as her apartment at 22 St George's Terrace is directly in the helicopter flight path as proposed. Councillor Catherine Lisa has disclosed a proximity interest in item 12.3 as her apartment is directly adjoining Perth Concert Hall, a venue named in the item. Councillor Catherine Lisa has disclosed a proximity interest in item 12.4 as her apartment is adjoining the Government House Ballroom, which is mentioned in point I opera in the City of Perth. Councillor Catherine Lisa has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 12.4 as she has attended an event at Barking Gecko which was a declared gift to the value of $300. The Lord Mayor has disclosed an indirect financial interest in item 14.1 as he is an employee of Seven West Media for which Australian Capital Equity is a major threat. Shareholder, Councillor Clive Bevan has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 11.3 as Grand Hotel Management were his landlords at the Hyatt Centre for 22 and a half years. Councillor Sandy Angie has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 11.1 as Hames Charlie and Humich Group are both known to her and she has met with representatives of each on several occasions over the past three years, however, not in relation to the matter before Council. Councillor Sandy Angie has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 11.4 as she was introduced to representatives of Kundal while on the campaign trail in recent weeks. Then they invited her to an event last week which she attended. Councillor Sandy Angie has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 12.2 as she is part of a team behind the statue of Edith Cowan to be installed in the city. This has already been approved by the city but she is flagging the impartiality. Councillor Sandy Angie has disclosed an impartiality interest in 12.3 as she has met with Ian Grandage on several occasions over the last three years. She has also attended Perth Festival events over the last three years, both in her capacity as a councillor and in her personal capacity having purchased tickets. Councillor Sandy Angie has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 12.4 as Form and Tabitha McMullen were involved in the Perth Design Week, which she organised this year. She is a current donor of Barking Gecko Theatre Company. She has also recently received an invitation to attend the Leicester Prize event and she has attended this event over the past couple of years in her capacity as a councillor. Councillor Sandy Angie has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 12.5 as she has attended a West Tech event to represent the city and deliver a speech. In subsequent events, she has purchased her own tickets and attended. Councillor Sandy Angie has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 12.5 as, as she was introduced to Marion Birchall while on the campaign trail in recent weeks and met with her for a coffee. She did not know she was involved in Singularity U and they did not discuss this. Councillor Sandy Angie has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 19.1 as she has met with the leaseholder and other tenants over the last couple of years. Deputy Lord Mayor Liam Gobbard has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 12.3 as he attended events held at Perth Festival as the city's representative in accordance with the attendance at events policy. No association has been formed and this represents an impartiality impartiality interest only. Deputy Lord Mayor Liam Gobbett has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 12.5 as he attended events held at Form Strat PICF WA Opera as the city's representative in accordance with the attendance at events policy. No association has been formed and this represents an impartiality interest only. He is also a member of the Blue Room Theatre and employees of Wasso are known to him. He also met with representatives of the PICF to understand their operations prior to the lodgement of the application. Deputy Lord Mayor Liam Gobbett has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 11.1 as he met with Mr Humich prior to the development application being lodged and determined. General Manager Community Development Carly 
Johnson has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 12.4 as Tabitha McMullen representing form previously worked at the City of Perth until mid-2021. During Tabitha's time at the City, she reported to the General Manager Community Development. The General Manager has met with Tabitha a couple of times at events and for coffee since she left the City. General Manager Planning and Economic Development, Dale Page, has disclosed an impartiality interest in item 11.3 as Paul McQueen from Lavin Legal is known to her personally. She has had no engagement or interactions with Paul McQueen in the assessment of their application or preparation and review of the report. I have disclosed an impartiality interest in item 12.3, Major Events and Festival Sponsorship, Perth Festival 2024, as I have invited Nathan Bennett, the Executive Director of Perth Festival, to participate as a panel member for a role the city has advertised. I am the Chair. Nathan brings expertise and insight to the panel to assist in making a sound appointment. Thank you very much, CEO. Uh, very comprehensive. Uh, now, I understand um, we already have some elected members with disclosures of interest from the floor. Um, have they been passed on to the CEO? I have two from yes. Councillor Gordon. Yes. So do you want to go through those I've first? Done that. They were done, were they, in the body of that? Okay, thank you. Uh, and there are some additional ones from the floor. Councillor Coe. Um, thank you. I'm sorry this is a bit late, um, but can I just read them out myself? Is that all right? Of course, yeah, Councillor yeah. Coe. Um, so I'm um, declaring indirect financial interests um, for uh, item 11.2. Um, the I'm currently employed at Royal Perth Hospital, and I work under the state trauma unit as one of their trauma registrars. Um, I also like to declare a proximity interest to um, 11.3 and 12.3 as my current home residence is uh, along Terrace Road. Thank you very much, Councillor Coe. Are there any other disclosures of interest from Councillor Angie? Uh, just in relation to the notice of motion, impartiality, because I'd met with the leaseholder the subject of the notice of motion. Thank you very much, Councillor Angie. Thank you. Are there any other disclosures of interest from the floor from any councillors? Thank you. Okay, so we'll move to item six now, uh, public participation. And 6.1 is public question time. CEO, have any public questions been received? Yes, a question has been received from Luke Patterson in relation to matters not on the agenda. Thank you, CEO. So before we commence public question time, I will remind everybody that five minutes is allocated for public question time uh, for each question, uh, 15 minutes in total. Uh, and this time is available for asking questions only and not for making statements. So I will now invite Luke Patterson to please step forward if Luke is with us. Luke is not with us, but we have received Luke's questions. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So we have received Luke's questions, and so Luke's questions and the answers will be um, will be with the minutes of this meeting. So uh, although Luke has not made it in time, his questions have been received, and his responses will be uh, will be in the minutes and um, they will be available publicly uh, at the appropriate time when they are normally posted. So move then to item seven, which is confirmation of minutes. Uh, will somebody please move the following motion to confirm the minutes of the ordinary council meeting held 25 July 2023 as a true and accurate record? Could I get somebody to do that? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, can I get a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Bevan. Uh, does anybody oppose this motion? So this being unopposed, I'll declare it carried. You Sorry, I'd like to register my opposition. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. Uh, so this motion is not uh, opposed. It is not unopposed. Uh, so, Deputy Lord Mayor, is there anything you wish to say? Councillor Bevan? Uh, Councillor Gordon. I'd just like to note that there's an additional motion in there that wasn't considered in the format that it was considered at Council and therefore I'm not going to support that as true and accurate minutes of a meeting because it didn't occur like that. Uh, Councillor Angie. Um, could we have um, from Councillor Gordon an explanation so we can review that and just ensure that we didn't overlook something ourselves? Councillor Gordon, are you prepared to uh, do that? 
So council took a vote on the corporate business plan, which required an absolute majority. The absolute majority was not achieved and they've minuted that it was two separate motions, one which part of it didn't achieve it, the absolute majority, so it didn't get up, and then they've split it into a second motion which didn't require the absolute majority and it's minuted as a second vote that did get up. I can't ask governance to uh, clarify or respond. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, we, we did actually reach out to Wolga for some advice on that motion and um, they've come back and said that that's an adequate way to deal with that motion. But who requested the advice and who's seen the advice? Through the Lord Mayor, the governance team have requested the advice and seen the advice. It can be distributed at the CEO's approval. Okay, thank you. Anything further from anyone for or against? Deputy Lord Mayor? We'll put this one to the vote then. Uh, all those in favour? Councillor Leeser, Councillor Coe, Deputy Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor and Councillor Bevan and Councillor Angie and those against? Councillor Gordon, thank you. So I'll declare that uh, uh, past six, seven, how many have we got? Uh, nine, um, seven, six, one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item eight, questions by members which due notice has been given. Three questions have been received from Councillor Fleeton as published in the agenda for this meeting in accordance with clause 4.72 of the City of Perth Standing Orders Local Law 2009. The responses to these questions have been provided to elected members in writing and will be published in the minutes of this meeting. Please note in accordance with clause 4.75 of the City of Perth Standing Orders Local Law 2009, no discussion in relation to the questions and answers is allowed. Item nine is correspondence. No correspondence has been received. 10 is petitions and no petitions have been received. We move on to reports, and before we move on to reports, the following items have been identified to be moved on block. They are 11.6, Urban Greening Strategy 2023-2036, 11.7, Wellington Street Clearway, 12.1, Review of Council Policy 4.7, Cultural Collections, 15.1, Interim Monthly Financial Statements, June 2023. 15.2, Schedule of Accounts Paid, June 2023. 15.3, Review of Financial Policies, CP 2.1, CP 2.3, CP 2.4, CP 2.5, CP 2.6, CP 2.9 and CP 2.10. 16.1, Council Resolutions Reporting and 17.1, ARC report, review of the audit and risk terms of reference. Do any elected members wish to extract any of the items that I've just listed from the on block motion? No, so I will now move a motion for those items to be dealt with on block. Could I get a seconder for this motion, please? Thank you, Councillor Bevan. Do any members oppose this motion? Motion being unopposed, I will declare it carried unanimously. The recommendations of those items have now passed on block in accordance with Clause 9.2 of the City of Perth Standing Orders Local Law 2009 and the officer and or committee recommendations have been adopted by Council. So we'll now move on to the reports extracted for debate. 11. Planning and Economic Development Alliance reports. 11. 1. Preparation of Amendment Number 50 to City Planning Scheme Number 2, New Special Control Area. We've received impartiality interest from Councillor Sandy Angie and Deputy Lord Mayor Liam Gobbers. Would anyone like to move the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Do we have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Coe. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I suppose this is a formality for the city to deal with. The development application uh, has received approval from the development assessment panel uh, earlier in the year, and um, this is really just us dotting T's and crossing I's. So, not the other way around. <laughs> crossing T's, dotting I's. Yeah, I second that. Thanks, TLM. Uh, is there anyone? Uh, second was Councillor Coe. Anyone else wish to speak for or against? Deputy Lord Mayor, said it all so well. Um, 
Let's take a vote. All those in favour? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you, everybody. We move then to item 11.2. Now, Councillor Coe is to leave the chamber at this point. Thank you, Councillor Coe. And Councillor Lisa also. And Councillor Lisa. Yep, both leaving the chamber. Thank you. So 11.2 is the final adoption of amendment number 47 to the city planning scheme number two and amendment number five to local planning scheme number 26, normalised redevelopment areas, Royal Perth, hospital flight path protection, special control area. Would anybody like to move the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. A seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just briefly, I think from hearing from the submissions uh, last week that there is still the potential within the scheme to allow for some development that will be able to achieve some maximums. So um, I hear the points that have been made, but um, on merit, I think this, uh, the scheme as it's been presented um, will still allow for some substantial development on the sites that have been um, brought up in question. Um, pre for me, uh, when, I, when I've dealt with applications like this in the past, we should really be looking to uh, controls that are aimed at preservation of life in a manner that is, I think, a little bit more compassionate with some others. And so while I accept that there will be some long-term implications for the development of our city, in this instance, it is necessary for us to be able to um, support this scheme amendment. Um, the other reality of this situation is, is that if we don't go ahead as it is presented to us, um, we could refuse to adopt, um, decline support, and then that would fall to the state who could um, insist that we as a local authority um, enact the amendment. So I think this is a measured response, um, all things considered from the submitters uh, and the relevant agencies. And on that basis, I'm prepared to support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Gordon. Thank you. Much aligned to the Deputy Lord Mayor. I don't think this is something that the city would choose to do voluntarily or that certainly any elected members want to do. Um, but we are in a unique position as the capital city. We have a hospital. Um, we have the City of Perth Act that requires us to consider a wider group of stakeholders than other governments. And in that vein, the pre excuse me, preservation of life that uh, Councillor Gobert spoke of um, needs to take, take the first um, priority. And in that we will support this. Thank you, uh, Councillor Gordon. Thank you also, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, I have nothing to add other than uh, echoing and endorsing the comments of the Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor who have spoken uh, so succinctly uh, on this matter. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak for or against? Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, anything further? Any T's to cross or I's to dot? No. Nope. Uh, let's put it to the vote then. All those in favour? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you, everybody. We go now to the door. And first, we're going to ask Councillor Coe to stay outside. Uh, Councillor Gordon is going to leave us, but we're going to invite Lisa. Councillor Lisa to come back in. And Councillor Bevan? Impartiality, you're okay. Yeah, thank you. You're so eager to get out, Councillor Bevan. Yeah. Come on. 11.3, uh, we have just we are about to deal with. Preparation of amendment number 51 to the city planning scheme number two to introduce an additional youth health care two to 99 lot 10 Adelaide Terrace, 10 and 40, that's lots 11 and 12 Terrace Road, East Perth. Would anyone like to move the officer's, officer's recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Lisa. And would anybody like to second? Uh, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Lisa. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I agree with the officer's comments that this is going to have minimal impact and provide good amenity that's desperately needed in the city. So I have no problem with this um, item at all and I commend it to my fellow councillors. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lisa. Seconded by the DLM. DLM? Just briefly, Lord Mayor, um, I think when it comes to the, the scheme and it allowing flexibility for now and into the future for how uh, landowners may wish to develop their site is a good thing. Uh, and so I'm quite happy to support the motion as it's presented. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, are there any further comments for or against from any councillors? 
Councillor Leeser, let's put it to the vote then. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Now, 11.4, we're inviting everybody back in. Thank you. Thank you to our general managers who are doubling as doormen and women. Thank you as well. 11.4 is the Sustainable City Report. Councillor Gordon, Councillor Coe back in the room. Um, so would anybody like to move the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Lisa. Seconded by Councillor Angie. Seconded? Yep. yep. Seconded by Councillor Angie. Councillor Lisa. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, there's uh, undeniably a lot of work to do in the sustainability space. We have to start somewhere. One of this, this document is one of our founding documents, or will become one of our founding documents in this space. I'm proud that this has come through in our term. And um, yeah, I think it's a good start. There's a lot to do. And I look forward to seeing the next plan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Lisa. Councillor Angie. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm pleased, like councillors, to see this come before council, having put up the notice of motion last year asking the CEO to investigate what could be done to in incentivise sustainability during this financial year. So I guess the purpose of my notice of motion was to help jumpstart sustainability. Um, we've just started on our sustainability journey with our sustainability strategy um, being approved last year. So we've obviously got a long way to go. Um, it's good to have a long list of initiatives from Cundall that the city can consider over time. Uh, personally, I would have liked to um, see, seen an even greater commitment this year in relation to sustainability and there were some simple things, I guess, that we could have done that, that don't cost money, for example, considering to rejoin City Switch, which was recommended by Cundall. So Sydney, Adelaide, Brisbane and Ballarat are all signatories to this flagship decarbonisation program for office-based businesses, um, just to name a few. Um, but, you know, what we've got proposed by administration is a modest start that we can build on over time. Thank you, Councillor Angie. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak for or against? I'll take the opportunity to speak for and say that I share the councillor's pride that uh, this document is now before council. There's a number of initiatives that I've been very proud of and proud to be a part of this year, including uh, probably at the top of the list, our community planting days, which have been well received and well attended by our community. And to see uh, local residents, our local business owners and operators join uh, city staff and elected members has been quite a sight to behold. And to see the sheer number of plants and shrubs that have gone into the ground during those community planting days has been magnificent. Also as part of that, the city's commitment to plant 1,000 trees in 2023 as we double down on our efforts to green our city. It's uh, with significant pride that we are now pushing ahead. As I've said many times when speaking at these events, um, our tree canopy is low. It is only at 19% and our stated ambition is to get it to 30%. And we don't look back uh, and point the finger of blame, although we do know uh, that uh, those who were in positions that we now uh, enjoy, uh, both administration and elected members, didn't necessarily know all of the things that we are aware of in this day and age. And so to see the response from this council and administration is something that we should be very proud of and we share that joy with our community who we know we are together making a better city for all. So I thank uh, the city and everyone involved for their efforts in this space. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak for or against? Well, let's put it to the vote then, shall we? Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Lisa. No, uh, let's put it to the vote then. All those in favour? Carriage unanimously. Thank you, everybody. 11.5 is the Forgotten Spaces Revitalising Perth Laneways, Episode 2. Would anyone like to move the officer's recommendation? Thanks, Councillor Angie. And a seconder, Councillor Lisa. Uh, Councillor Angie. 
Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm also pleased to see this strategy before council being another one of my prolific notices of motion over the last three years. Laneways are a point of difference in our city, along with history, heritage, architecture, art and culture. Laneways are something that suburban shopping, shopping malls don't have, and they're one of the things that attracts visitors to our city and other cities and that people find intriguing. But talking to our city's residents, businesses and visitors, many laneways in our city currently feel unsafe, especially with a lack of lighting and activation. So I think we can do better, and I think we all now agree on that. And it also seems the community agrees, as stated in the agenda, the city hosted an online engaged Perth survey um, with 108 survey responses, which was a good turnout, and 100% support for revitalisation of laneways in central Perth and Northbridge, which is a great outcome. Um, some of the key themes from the feedback, which is also in the agenda, was the perception that lack of commitment to ongoing maintenance in city-owned laneways lack of ongoing investment, including mural art programs, and people would like to see more opportunities for outdoor dining in a way that balances the needs of servicing and, of course, the need to address lighting and overall perceptions of safety. So I look forward to future laneway upgrades, progressing pursuant to this strategy, so that feedback and concerns raised by the community can be addressed and that our city's potential of our city laneways can be realised, helping to improve safety and vibrancy. Thank you, Councillor Angie. Councillor Lisa. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, just, just to point out, in case anybody hasn't read the documents, that uh, one, of the, one of the items mentioned in here is that the laneways also provide opportunity for citywide art trails. They also provide opportunity to host temporary art installations and they, of course, support festivals and provide gathering spaces. So it's very important to recognise beyond just the physical that it's, it's, it's a long-term strategy for a lot of very interesting things ahead. So I commend this to my fellow councillors. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lisa. Thanks, Councillor Angie. Anyone else wish to speak for or against? Councillor Angie? I actually just had a question before wrapping up. So I did have a question on notice, and that was whether um, the city considered selling any laneways in the context of this report. And um, I noticed that at the start of this report, it does actually flag um, an extension of the survey to West Perth. Um, so just wondering if it says, no, it wasn't considered. So will the scope of any further studies be different to this one? Can I just check before um, we continue on with the response? If this is, I'm not certain that it is, but if this is in any way alluding to an item that comes up later, um, it would be prudent for me not to be in here. Maybe we could ask governments. Yeah. Maybe come back. It does? Okay. So at this point I might ask the Deputy Lord Mayor to assume the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, I guess just I'll take yes. your question as heard by the administration and refer yep. through to the CEO. Thank you. If I could invite the general manager, planning and economic development, to respond, please. Thank you. Through you, Deputy Lord Mayor, the scope for the West Perth Laneways study hasn't been finalised yet, but at this stage, the intent is to review all the laneways to look at their um, the role their form, their function, the use of them, um, and we will look at opportunities to revitalise those laneways. So there won't be any recommendations made about sale or otherwise, but there will be enough in that report that talks about the importance of each laneway in the permeability or legibility of the suburb um, that will give council enough um, information to make future decisions in relation to those laneways. Thank you, General Manager. Planning Economic Development. Were there any further questions, Councillor Angie? No, that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just bear with us two seconds. I'm going to invite the Lord Mayor back in. Thank you. Thanks to ELM and thank you everybody. So I believe, uh, and uh, Councillor Angie's closing remarks, yep. Okay, so uh, all those in favour? Oh, have you? I didn't close out, right. but that's okay. No Do you wish to point. close out? No, that's fine. Okay, you sure? 
Okay. Uh, so all those in favour, we'll put it to the vote, all those in favour, and that is carried unanimously. Thanks, Councillor Angie. Eleven six is the Urban Greening Strategy 2023-2036. Uh, that is on block. Eleven seven, Wellington Street Clearway, also on block. 12, Community Development Alliance Reports. 12.1 is Review of Council Policy 4.7, Cultural Collections on Block. 12.2, Review of Council Policies 4.8, Public Art and 4.9, Commemorative Works. We have uh, an interest declared, impartiality only from Councillor Angie. Would anybody like to move the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Lisa. And do we have a seconder, please? Uh, 12.2? 12.2, TLA, yeah. Uh, thanks, Councillor Gordon. Uh, Councillor Lisa? Nothing, Lord Mayor, I think it's all in the paper. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. Thank you. Anyone else for or against? Nope. Uh, Councillor Lisa? Put it to the vote then, all those in favour? And that's carried unanimously, thank you. Uh, Twelve three is the major events and festivals sponsorship. And we have a couple of our councillors to leave here. Councillor Coe, it's been lovely. Uh, Councillor Lisa is going to leave us. And Councillor Gordon, also going to leave us. Thank you, General Manager Johnson and uh, General Manager Mason. Right. Okay. Uh, so, twelve point three major events and festival sponsorship: the Perth Festival twenty twenty four. Would anyone like to move the officer's recommendation? Just a question, first sure. of all, Mayor. Can we um, confirm with governance that we have quorum to deal with this item? Certainly. Yes. One, two, three, four. Right, so um, so that would have to be deferred then to the next council meeting, but a decision like this, and I'll just check with governance, but I'm assuming I'm right. Uh, so this decision couldn't be taken during the caretaker period, is that right? Is that everybody's understanding, or is there a, another understanding from anyone? Um, when's Council Fleet and Black from, back from Lake? We have a special council meeting. Um, Through yeah. the Lord Mayor, it would still be during um, caretaker period. Yeah. Okay. And um, well, I was going to say, are there implications with it not being passed beforehand? But I, I suppose, in a way, whether there are implications or not. I suppose um, there might be options to discuss this with the department. But um, referring to the general manager, is there a time imperative? I mean, there always is, of course. But so the, the just yeah. sorry, just before the, so the funding has been uh, there is a. There is a recommendation mm. here, mm. and uh, we were about to vote on that, but we would have needed one more to have a quorum. Is that correct? Yeah, one more to have a quorum, not preempting the vote, but you know, um, sort of preempting it. Uh, so maybe, Lord Mayor, if we could take this. I mean, clearly a decision can't be made tonight, mm. but we might take some further advice on what the options are to uh, to look to this as a priority. Would imagine that um, the proponent does need to understand or know um, what funding they might receive. So I think if we could just take this, obviously we won't consider it tonight, but we'll take it on notice and we'll see what what might be achievable. Mm. And typically, and if this was approved tonight, mm -hmm. does a check get sent the next day? Uh, not quite. There's uh, quite a bit of work that goes into then um, agreeing on the specifics of the um, assigned agreement and the like. But, uh, but again, these are um, partners that the city has had a very positive relationship sure. over many years. Yeah. So, so um, it would be October before this. If, if yeah. there's not another way found... If it's got to come back to um, ordinary council meeting, it'd be Correct. October, wouldn't it? Correct. Yep. Lord I, Mayor, can I point out that I'm going to be away for three and a half weeks as of the 31st of this month? Yes, but you'll be back for the ordinary council meeting in October. October, yes, I will. Yeah, so that's okay, I think. Okay, is that necessary for this? All right, so let's just, um, just, just take a moment, please, if we...
Okay, so um, so what we might do then is adjourn for, do we need 10 minutes? Five minutes going to do it? We're going to adjourn for five minutes from now, 5.41 p.m. We'll be back in the chamber at 5 46. Happy to move that, Lord Mayor. Yeah, thank you. Moved by Councillor, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Angie. Those in favour? Beauty. Okay, five minutes. Adjournment period up. So we're going to reopen the meeting. And Councillor Coe, I believe you've reconsidered your declaration. Uh, it's over to you. Uh, yes, I'll, I have been provided a little bit more new information about my declaration on item 12.3. Um, I believe this year uh, it would not be held um, in proximity to my current home residence. So I would like to ask to have my um, conflict of interest, proximity interest for 12.3 be redacted. Okay, thank you. Are we okay with that, Governors? We are. Thank you. So um, in that case, um, by my rough count, that gives us five and a quorum. Would that be accurate? We do have a quorum. Thank you. We do. Um, we've moved. Uh, who moved it? Oh, we haven't moved it. Okay. So, would anybody like to move the officer's recommendation, please? Had we moved it? No, you asked a question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Bevan. Seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Angie. Councillor Bevan. Nothing further to add. Thank, Thank you, Councillor Bevan. Councillor Angie. Oh, just that every year in Perth, um, obviously the Perth Festival is a highlight of the city's calendar, activating our city's streets. And this year there's a focus on activating bricks and mortar, which is great to see as well. Thanks, Councillor Angie. Yes, I'll just add some comments to that, and that is that it is terrific to see the bulk of the Perth Festival back in Perth, and that's a priority for all of us. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against? Uh, Councillor Bevan? Let's put it to the vote then, shall we? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Could we... Uh, oh, let's see who we're inviting back in. It's sort of musical chairs tonight, isn't it? It's exciting. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Lisa is remaining out. And Councillor Gordon is coming back in. We've lost uh, Councillor Gordon. Wow. What an eventful night. Don't go too far in, uh, General Manager. Or just wait a moment. It looks good, doesn't it? Oh. Oh, welcome back, Councillor Gordon. No, Councillor Lees is out. Yep. You're in yep. and away we go with 12.4 Arts and Culture Sponsorship 2023-2024. Would anyone like to move the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. And a seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It would be remiss of me not to at least get some excitement going on this matter, con uh, considering how much each of these individual associations do for our city. And I particularly want to thank um, all of the applicants for their effort in bringing their funding applications to the city. And while I understand that um, some of the recommendations that have been put aren't what might have been expected, um, I still think that it's going to be, uh, it will result in our core objective, which is to activate and enliven the city. And for that, I'd um, like to commend and thank the applicants for their continued interest in um, the culture and the arts in the City of Perth. Thanks, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Gordon. Thank you. The Deputy Lord Mayor is particularly articulate tonight. I should stop seconding <laughs> his items. <laughs> um, yes, um, much aligned again. Um, many great events um, and great groups here. And I really like the, as uh, Councillor Angie said before about laneways being unique 
to the city. I really like these smaller scale events that really do attract and create unique experiences for people to connect with on a more emotional level. Um, and certainly having had the privilege of attending um, events from a number of these groups over the past three years, I can wholeheartedly support the efforts um, that they go to to make our city a great place and great to see that we can support them again. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. I'd like to add some comments to that and um, I think the commentary from the DLM and Councillor Gordon is appropriate and so are the numbers. The pure numbers tell a story as well and I'm just going to take a moment to go through it so that everybody is very clear of the support that the City of Perth is able to provide for these very important organisations who bring life, colour, activity, motion and, and really, in many cases, bring the arts alive in our city of Perth. So the Scribblers Festival receiving a $60,000 contribution. The Blue Room Theatre's 2024 annual program, $60,000 cash. Barking Gecko, the Great Word Factory, $50,000 in cash. The Strut Dance Incorporated Perth Moves 2024, $50,000 cash. A WA Ballet Company, Spotlight and Increasing Swan Lake Access, $60,000. And the Black Swan 2024 Season and City Activations, a further $65,000 contribution. Perth International Cabaret Festival for 2024, $40,000. Wasso's Family Christmas Spectacular, an outstanding event. They all are, $80,000 cash. Uh, Opera in the City of Perth, $50,000 cash. The Leicester Prize for the Leicester Prize ex Exhibition for 2023-2024, a $60,000 contribution. And the Contemporary Dance Company of Western Australia Limited, the Pathways Program, $25,000 cash. As we heard last week in the Chamber from the representatives who came forward. Many of these events might not be able to take place were it not for that significant contribution from the City of Perth. Uh, our arts and culture sponsorship, which totals $660,000. I think that's something we should all be very proud of. We are playing a significant role, in fact, a leadership role in bringing our city to life. And I thank our uh, administration for the work that they do in processing all of these applications and coming to these determinations and to my fellow councillors for uh, in anticipation of supporting this through council tonight. Very worthy causes and great contributions we should be very proud of. Anyone else wish to speak for or against? Councillor Angie. Yeah, I'll also speak for being a passionate advocate of the arts and some other numbers, I'll quote numbers as well. Um, the form, the Scribblers bringing 10,000 people into the city, um, Blue Room Theatre bringing 13,000 people in, Barking Ge Gecko, 8,000 people, Strap Dance, 10,000 people, West Australian Ballet, 24,000 people, uh, Black Swan, 35,000 people, Perth International Cabaret Festival, 13,000, Symphony Orchestra, 20,000, Opera in the City, 11,000, and Leicester Prize, 22,000, and Co3 Dance, 2,000. So that's close to 200,000 people into our city, not only supporting the arts and bringing vibrancy into the city, but what's really important about this is that it brings people into the heart of the CBD, supporting our bricks and mortar, our cafes, bars and restaurants. And, and that's a great outcome of the arts, that arts you know, generates income not only for themselves in putting these things on to further um, creative pursuits, but they also support local business as well and bring vibrancy to the city. So all round, I think everyone's pleased. Uh, Councillor Angie, anyone else wishing to speak for or against? Deputy Lord Mayor? Don't wish to close, thanks. Thank you. Let's put it to the vote then. All those in favour? And that is carried unanimously. Now, item 13 is Infrastructure and Operation Alliance Reports. There aren't any tonight. Item 14. Uh, 12, have I missed a page? Hang on. 12.5. Sorry, 12.5. So 12.5 is 2023-2024 Economic Development Sponsorship, West Tech Fest and Singularity U Perth. Uh, everybody's staying in the chamber? Oh, we can bring Councillor Lisa back in. Yes. Thank you. General Manager Johnson, on the job. Councillor Lisa, re-entering the chamber. We can keep the door open, uh, General Manager Johnson, because the air conditioning's down at the moment, I believe. Just being advised. Thank you. 
All righty then, 2023-2024 Economic Development Sponsorship, uh, which I've mentioned, West Tech Fest and Singularity U, Perth. Would anyone like to move the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Do we have a seconder in the room tonight? Thank you, Councillor Coe, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Coe, uh, anyone wishing to speak for or against? Deputy Lord Mayor, let's put it to the vote. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thanks, everybody. So 13, as I've mentioned, we don't have any infrastructure and operation alliance reports tonight, which takes us to 14. Commercial Services Alliance reports. 14.1 is an item that I am going to leave the chamber for, so I'm going to invite the Deputy Lord Mayor to come forward for the second time tonight. So I'll firstly seek a mover and a seconder for the officer's recommendation under 14.1. Moved Councillor Leeser. Can I get a seconder, please? A seconded Councillor Gordon. Councillor Leeser, did you wish to speak? Thanks, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I have, I understand there, there was, we read all, of course we all read the concerns of the submissions, um, but I wanted to just point out that I'm comforted by uh, what the, what's in the report, to say that the access will be guaranteed by easement. There are also other items that will mitigate the concerns. Um, I note that there are examples in the Greater Perth, not necessarily City of Perth, that we've uncovered, of laneways being sold to private hands. And um, I'm very happy for this item to continue to the next step. I understand this is not the final step, but it's the next step. So I commend this to my fellow councillors. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lisa. Councillor Gordon. Thank you. Um, I consider this to be a really exciting opportunity for West Perth, um, if not the city as a whole, to bring vibrancy by way of greater residential population in West Perth. So I think I said at the time that we considered it previously that the outcomes of a possible development there are much more significant than the actual dollar value we will get for the purchase price. So given the purchase price is in excess of the um, arm's length fair value for valuation, I think that's a good outcome for the city, but I'm really looking forward to seeing more people in West Perth 24-7 and how they can support those local businesses and bring that vibrancy that we all crave. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. I'll go first to any uh, further questions from Councillor Angie. There have been a few that have been received and responded to. Any further questions? No, no further questions. Sure. I'll ask if there are any speakers in favour of the recommendation. Any speakers against? Councillor Angie. Thanks, um, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, well, I agree with Councillor Gordon's comments about um, it would be great to see more residential in West Perth, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. I recently posted some declining footfall stats in West Perth, particularly on Hay Street, so greater population would be a huge benefit to local business. However, I, I unfortunately, I will have to um, speak against this motion, as put. Um, the city has never sold a laneway before. It does seem a bit back to front to be selling the laneway before completing the West Perth laneway review and strategy. Uh, previously, when matters have arisen, we've been told that strategy must come first, um, particularly in relation to the city's property portfolio and leveraging that. Um, you know, we haven't seen a great deal of action to date because we've, told the we've been told the review must come first. In addition to the lack of a strategy, in this case, we have carried out public consultation and the responses that we had were overwhelmingly in the negative. And further, in my view, the concerns raised by residents and ratepayers have not been adequately, adequately addressed, in my view, by the administration. The administration's response to many of the questions raised in the public submissions is simply the word noted, or they've referred to the yet to be completed West Perth study. I refer to just one example in the agenda, being the submission from the Council of Owners of Zenith Apartments, and they talk about concerns about reduced access to car parks, fire egress and potential traffic hazards. 
These were common themes in the submissions. Uh, others raised medical access for elderly residents as a potential issue. Um, as I said, I don't believe these concerns have been adequately addressed by the administration's response. Um, the statement that an easement will continue to provide access has been made. However, this statement was then qualified by the administration's further statement that this was pending the yet to be done laneway study. Consultation shouldn't just be a tick box exercise to say it's been just it's been done. It should be genuine, and that I think the best decisions we make at council are the ones that we make with people, and we bring them together with us on the journey. Uh, the agenda has made clear to me that we need a more considered policy on unsolicited bids, and one where the process involves a more transparent process for the community. I would urge the City of Perth to consider completing the proposed West Perth Laneway review before progressing the sale and more fully responding to community concerns, particularly around access. And I guess my final point is that if the City does sell this laneway, it then sets a precedent. What happens if someone approaches the City next week to buy another laneway or part of a laneway? What will we do? So it's for these eight reasons that I've outlined that I cannot support the administration's recommendation at this time uh, with not feeling that the concerns of the re residents have been fully addressed and without an overarching strategy. Thank you, Councillor Angie. And before I go to Councillor Bevan, I'm just going to throw the CEO um, request if the General Manager Commercial Services is able to provide um, any position on Councillor Angie's mark remarks. Sorry, is that a question from you? Mm, or? I've requested that of the general manager, yes. Thank you, through the Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, we find ourselves, I suppose, in a quite a unique position here. The, the portion of the laneway that's proposed for disposal sits between two adjacent properties that are owned by the same owner. Quite a unique situation. The rest of the laneway that adjoins uh, this portion is not impacted. So the other owners, as, as I've explained in the, in the responses to some of the questions today, the rest of the owners are not impacted. Uh, their rear access is not impacted by this potential disposal. Now, what we'll find is that this, if the disposal goes through and the laneway study comes back and says, look, it is still a critical part of the laneway network, then the proponent will be able to develop under and have a con and develop a contiguous ba uh, basement for car parking. They will be, be able to develop over, therefore providing continued access on the land, for example, for a, for a refuse truck, but it will still permit a substantial residential development to occur. However, if the laneway study comes back, and it says that that portion of the laneway is not critical, then they will be able to fully develop that land and they'll be able to develop on the land. So we've thought of every single, uh, I suppose, permutation in this instance. And as I say, it will still allow a substantial residential development to occur, um, but we'll still got the laneway study findings to come back to confirm whether we can actually allow them to develop on the land as opposed to just under and over. Thank you, General Manager. Uh, Commercial Services, Councillor Bevan, did you wish to speak? My question's been answered, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll briefly speak to the motion. Um, so Council has a resolved strategic position statement on accepting admittedly unsolicited bids, but albeit a similar proposal. Uh, our own council policy allows for this. We have determined this evening on a separate matter that the amalgamation of lots on Barrick Street facilitates future development. And I appreciate the contribution from the general manager in identifying just that, is that the, there is a section of this street that is broken up by the laneway and the purchase and amalgamation will create a very real ability to enliven an area of West Perth. It's not uncommon in local government to consider the sale of lazy land assets that might otherwise not be contributing to the future potential of an area. In a past life, I recall the sale of several parcels of 
small land divested for the purposes of pu funding public infrastructure. So it's, it's not uncommon, but admittedly, it's just never happened in the city of Perth before. So this is within the realm of possi possibility for us as a local authority, as, as an industry. And so um, I'm quite happy to entertain on a case-by-case merits-based proposal, as we are this evening, how we might be able to enliven an area such as we are seeing in this report. So on that basis, I'm prepared to accept the officer's recommendation. Uh, I'll go uh, now to other councillors if they wish to speak. Otherwise, I will go to, I believe it was Councillor Lisa to close. Thank you. Thanks, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Yes, I'm very pleased to hear the um, explanation and I think that we can trust the administration to get the best outcome for all residents. I'm also comforted to note that the um, any easement would also include obligations on the proponent to maintain the site. So that means all the other neighbours will have, have, have a nice, nicely maintained laneway. So it's for that reason and for all the other things that we've said tonight, um, we are for more residents and we are for more people in our neighbourhood, neighbourhoods, including West Perth. So thank you. I think it's a good motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lisa. I'll put uh, just your microphone, Councillor Lisa, thanks. Oh, sorry. I'll put the motion then and ask those in favour to cast their votes. That is myself, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Bevan, Councillor Gordon, Councillor Lisa, and those against. That is Councillor Coe and Councillor Angie. Declare it carried. Thank you. I would like to invite the Lord Mayor back in. Thank you, DLM. So we're on to 15? Thank you. 15. 15 Corporate Services Alliance Reports. 15.1 is the interim, interim monthly financial statements. DLM, did you take my pen by any chance? Okay. It's all right. Don't worry. Look at this. There's heaps here. Thank you. Um, 15.1, interim monthly financial statements, June 2023. Now, would anybody like to... Nobody's going in or out. Happy days. Uh, would anyone like to move the officer's recommendation? We don't need to do that because that is on block. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Um, let's go to 15.2. 15.2 is the schedule of accounts paid June 2023, also on block. 15.3, review of financial policy, CP 2.1, CP 2.3, CP 2.4, CP 2.5, CP 2.6, CP 2.9, and CP 2.10. That is also on block. 15.4, review of council policy 2.16, complaints management. So this has been extracted for debate, subject to amended officer's recommendation. Now this item, as I mentioned, subject to an officer's amended officer's recommendation. Would anybody like to move the amended officer's recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Lisa. Seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Lisa. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, no. Uh, anyone wish to speak for or against? Councillor Gordon. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll speak against um, the recommendation and the um, updated policy. I just think in this day and age, we should be welcoming feedback. So not allowing anonymous complaints just means we don't entertain feedback that may come. And people have different reasons for wanting to maintain their anonymity. I think a, um, in, in the interest of good governance, accountability and transparency, most businesses now would set up a whistleblower hotline which would allow anonymous feedback but it would also in our enable um, the business to get feedback from the anonymous complainer um, as to specific details to their complaint so you know we don't have a whistleblower hotline in so far as I'm aware we therefore don't allow anonymous complaints I just think it's an opportunity missed to receive information about the organization that may be prudent to the running of the organization and could be used in the betterment of how we operate. And I also consider the one month time frame to register a complaint to be too restrictive. Um, you know, it can take time. We do operate in a bit of a um, 
microcosm. Not everyone knows what's going on here. People might have complaints that arise or they may not have the ability to lodge a complaint within one month. I think it's a too short a time frame. I'd love to be receiving all feedback, notwithstanding the fact it's come from an anonymous source. Thank you. Councillor Gordon, um, anyone wish to speak for or against? Councillor Bevan, your light's on, yes. I'd like to speak for it. Um, firstly, I'd like to reject the comments of Councillor Gordon because I believe if you want to make a complaint, if you don't want to put your name to it, well, then it's not worth making. So um, I've worked in hospitality and with the internet and so on and people making all sorts of comments and not putting their name to it causes a lot of havoc. So I think if you want to make a complaint, you should put your name to it. Thank you, Councillor Bevan. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak for or against? Deputy Lord Mayor was the mover. I wish to close, thank you. Thank you. Oh, and just one moment. Sorry, uh, it was me. <laughs> I was the one who proposed the motion. <laughs> Since we haven't closed, can I ask a question? Uh, yes. Um, so have we considered what other councils do? So what's what's typical? CEO? If, if I could ask uh, our General Manager, Governance and Strategy to comment. Thank you very much. Through the Lord Mayor, certainly in terms of regulatory agencies, uh, anonymous complaints are often not accepted unless there's a reasonable suspicion. Um, they're very difficult to follow up and validate or substantiate any of the information. Um, with regards to the time frame, that really does vary. Thank you. See ya. Is there anything further? No? Okay. Uh, right, now it was Councillor Lisa, and Councillor Lisa, you have chosen nothing further? Uh, just to, just oh. to point out that, of course, this is one of many mechanisms we have to make complaints, including to the Department of Local Government. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, I'm happy to move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's put this to the vote then. All those in favour? Councillor Lisa, Councillor Coe, Deputy Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor, Councillor Bevan, those against? Councillor Angie and Councillor Gordon. So that is passed five to two. We move on then to item number 16, Chief Executive Officer Reports, Officer Alliance Reports. 16.1 is the Council Resolutions Reporting. And this is on block. 17, Committee Reports. 17.1 is the ARC Report, Review of the Audit and Risk Committee Terms of Reference, also on block. 18. Motions of which notice has been received. 18.1, notice of motion supporting bricks and mortar. Uh, this has been extracted for debate. An absolute majority is required here. Uh, Councillor Angie has submitted a notice of motion regarding paid parking at Langley Park. Councillor Angie, can you please move your motion and please reserve your reasons until the motion is open for debate? Thank you. Moved by Councillor Angie. Is there a seconder in the room? Seconding Councillor no. Gordon. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Angie. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, the notice of motion is to request the CEO to use best endeavours to arrange paid parking on Langley Park for the pop-up ozone reserve events to be held in December this year. And this is in order to minimise impacts on nearby bricks and mortar businesses on the point. Um, the reasons are as I've provided in the notice of motion ahead of time. So obviously having a diverse range of events is really important to our city and we've just I provided a host of sponsorships this this month and last and it's important to activate our city and create vibrancy and part of this program is obviously pop-up events however in curating the city's events program we need to take care that our bricks and mortar businesses our city's restaurants cafes bars and other they that they benefit from the events program as well times are tough at the moment in recent months i've had a number of conversations with businesses whose turnover hasn't recovered post-covid and just last week's 
Last week, I went to Last Drinks at a lounge bar in West Perth. In relation to Point Fraser in particular, about a decade ago, the city of Perth invested considerable resources, I recall it was around 13 million, into transforming Point Fraser into an environmentally sustainable public recreation space and children's playground area. And it's my understanding that commercial development there on the point was part of the city's overall plan. The On The Point complex is in fact the city's tenant, paying rent to the city in addition to rates. And the success and vibrancy of this complex is really important. We don't want more vacant space in our city. Craig Hicks from the Art of Seafood restaurant at On The Point wrote to all elected members last year expressing concern about the loss of parking and therefore customers and revenue for his venue due to the pop-up event on Ozone Reserve held last Christmas, which is his busiest time as it is for most food and beverage uh, retailers across the city. He again wrote to elected members this year on the same matter. So this notice of motion is simply about mitigating the impacts on bricks and mortar businesses like Craig's by setting up temporary event parking on Langley Park for the pop-up event on, on Ozone Reserve in December. This has been done before. One example is the Perth Garden Show. I parked there myself in the city's temporary parking when I attended that event. And I understand that the city, in fact, made a profit from that, $32,130. Uh, so based on the advice from the city's administration prior to putting forward this notice of motion, I thank um, the general manager for his assistance in drafting it, I understand the city requires approval from the Department of Transport in order to use reserves for parking and that for the city to receive this approval, all car parks in the area must be expected to be full. Based on anecdotal evidence from On The Point, the parking adjacent to their business was full in 2022. I also note from last week, we, we found out that the um, reserve parking at On The Point is now, has now been lost due to the construction of the bridge, so that puts further pressure on parking this year. So it would be great to see the city use best efforts to seek approval from the Department of Transport to set up additional parking if this is possible and make sure that we support both pop-up events and bricks and mortar at the same time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Angie. That was seconded by Councillor Gordon. Councillor Gordon. I'll reserve my right to speak at this stage. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to... Uh, yes, Councillor Lisa. Questions sure, yes, I've got some questions as well. You, uh, away are you going? Um, now that we have uh, a resignation from uh, former Councillor Bain, what is the absolute majority, please? Yeah, my understanding is that it is remains five, so it is the um, it is the absolute majority of the total number of councillors that are permitted at that council. Um, so nine is our total number, and even though we have a resignation. Um, nine is still the number for determining the absolute majority of which is five. But let me just check that with my friends in governance. Through you, Lord Mayor, absolutely correct. Oh, how good do I feel now? Um, and I have a follow-up, Lord Mayor, yes. please. Um, if uh, somebody, if one of our councillors owned a property uh, directly opposite Langley Park, would it constitute a proximity interest in this motion? Governance. Welcome. Back. Through Lord Mayor, we would need more information if it relates to a uh, development plan for the region. Can I ask my question now? Councillor Kai. So I've never ever seen parking in front of my apartment. I live directly across from Langley Park. Mm -hmm. The parking's always been on one one side or the other. It's about two kilometres away from where my apartment is. Langley Park is really big. Mm -hmm. If it's just a section, of, it's going to be a section of Langley Park uh, that will be reserved for parking, or would the entire park be use for parking. Uh, well, so that would go through you, CEO, to the general manager, I understand. General manager. And the application we made will be based on what we estimate the required parking to be. So that work still to be done, but that's, that's part of our submission to the Department of Transport. So Thank just you. To, so just to clarify, you can use any part of Langley Park for parking, is that right? General Manager? Yeah, providing we get Department of Transport to, to support it. And I think if you look at my response there, there's only, actually only two occasions where the Department of Transport have, have actually supported it. Uh, only two occasions? And, and how many times have we asked for that support? We've only asked for those on those two. Occasions. Oh, so it's two out of two? It is. Okay, yeah. Councillor Leeser. 
Is Langley Park on one land title? Uh, General Manager. I'd have to take that on notice. Mm -hmm. Councillor Kai. All right, I'll declare proximity interests. I live directly across from Langley Park. And um, if it is going to be used for parking, then yes, uh, my property is. Okay, Councillor Cut, we need you to leave the chamber now, please. And uh, General Manager Johnson will need you to continue on your very efficient work of tonight. Councillor Gordon. It's amazing as I found that. I actually think I'm going to declare a proximity interest as well. Okay. Um, Councillor Gordon. For the same reasons cited for the Hyatt matter. So we're going to need you to leave the chamber also. Okay. And General Manager. Sorry? Right, okay, we'll go back and get another second. The General Manager Mason. Sort of, it's like a showdown either side of the room. Um, okay, so our seconder was Councillor Gordon. Let's get a seconder back, shall we? Is that uh, the first thing that we should be doing? So it's been moved by Councillor Angie, and we've heard reasons. Thank you. And now we need a seconder, or even though the reasons have been given, that's okay? Okay, so can we have a seconder, please, to sort of reintroduce it back in? Through the chair, if I may, isn't this a pointless exercise because we're not going to have five people vote for it? Well, we might. How do we know that? Oh, well, the person who moved the motion is going to vote against. No, 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 I'm not. I don't think that's right, Councillor Bevan. Um, but let's just see how it goes, hey? You never know. Um, could you do us a favour? Could you do me a favour, please, Councillor Bevan? I'll say that properly. Could you, Councillor Gordon's microphone off? Thank you. So, we don't have a seconder as yet, do we? Are we going to get a seconder from anybody? So we don't have a seconder. So uh, governance? So the vote lapses? For, uh, for want of a seconder. Okay. So that's the item done. So this item uh, has lapsed. 18.1, uh, that item has lapsed. Okay, we move to item 19 then. Uh, let's invite our friends back in. Oh, it's been a bit of a week. <laughs> Councillor Coe. Okay, thank you. Just want to take this opportunity to thank the general managers for their stellar work tonight on the doors. Councillor Coe. So item 19, we move to matters for which the meeting may be closed and we'll move behind closed doors to consider confidential items 19.1 and 19.2 in accordance with sections 5.232C and 5.232A of the Local Government Act 1995. The live stream will be paused. I'll move a motion to close the meeting to the public. Could I have a seconder, please? Thanks, DLM. Uh, all those in favour? That is carried unanimously. So I'm going to ask the public gallery to vacate. You go with our thanks. I appreciate we may not see you back. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. And the live stream I'm also requesting will now be paused. And General Manager... Where'd they go? I think, I think we're just, we're good. There any, any more people? That's it? Okay. Um, so item 20, urgent business. No items have been consented to being raised in accordance with clause 4.14 of the City of Perth Standing Orders Local Law, which brings us to item 21. There being no further business, I now declare the, declare the ordinary council meeting closed at 6... 38 p.m. And I thank everyone for their attendance and their attention. We'll see you in a month during caretaker period. Thank you and good night. Could we all please rise for the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor of Perth, Mr Basil Zemplis. Thanks, everyone.